Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here to do my review of the Panasonic G100, also known as the Panasonic Lumix G100. And this is their answer to the Sony ZV-1. If you're watching this video, you probably know what the Sony ZV-1 is, and it's kind of like one of the standard bearing cameras, especially in the vlogging environment. So this is a micro four thirds camera, and it is designed for vlogging. And what's also great is you can get the tripod selfie grip that goes along with it, screws into the bottom, the tripod articulates and moves around, you can adjust it, and it's got a shutter button, a record button, and a sleep button on here. And the MSRP, if you get all this together, is about $7.99, it's about 100 bucks less if you don't get the tripod selfie grip. But a lot of cool stuff here, and we're gonna dive in and talk about the camera. But before we get into that, I do wanna say, if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And let's talk about the fancy G100. First things first, this is a 4K capable camera. It will shoot 4K at 30 frames per second. It will not do 60 frames per second, which I mean, it's kind of, eh, it's whatever in that department, but at $700, micro four thirds camera, there's only so much that you can do, especially when you're talking about battery life, because the battery in this sucker is not the biggest thing in the world. But what I will say is it will give you probably about an hour of recording time. Now, I haven't sat down with a stopwatch, but I've recorded a lot of stuff. I've recorded back to back to back videos, and I've even used it with a HDMI connector for video, like those Elgato cam links. I use a 1080p cam link, plug it into my computer, it'll get me over an hour and 20 minutes of continuous recording straight to the computer for my live streams on YouTube before it dies. So that's really, really impressive there. It'll take your SXDC or SD card, whichever one you prefer, SDXC, and it works out nice. Good read write times, all that jazz. It's got a three inch screen on the back, fully articulating. So it pops open like this. You can see it, if I take the lens cap off. So you can see it here, but also, watch this. Ta -da! It flips around. And that's one of the beauties of having a vlogging camera. You can use this, you put it on the little selfie stick, you hold it up like this in front of you, you can see yourself. And that's really appealing, especially when people wanna go out and do a lot of this vlogging stuff. Go out, do your travel channel videos. I mean, when it's not 2020. Or if you're making other YouTube style videos, this is really perfect, especially if you're not doing product showcase stuff. And one thing, I wanna draw a distinction between this and the ZV-1. The ZV-1 is really ideal if you're doing product showcase stuff because it has that setup, that dedicated feature already in it. See, the autofocus on this is okay, but whenever you have the depth sensing technology and that product feature with the ZV-1, it changes the focus so fast. So this camera, like many others, Whenever you hold it out and you put something in front of it, you have to make sure it covers your eyes because if you're not covering this part of your face, then it will continue to lock onto your face. It uses the eye detect autofocus, which is very common with cameras. This one, I think that it works pretty well. It changes back and forth between stuff with relative good speed. It just depends on you know making sure that you cover up your eyes first. Well, one of the reasons that I really love this, and I talked about this a second ago, is the battery life. The battery life is insanely good for this tiny little battery that's in here. I don't have any problems with it. I can record multiple videos, and like I said, I can stream for a long time. I had the ZV-1, and I actually returned it because the battery life is completely pants. It's terrible. You can get like maybe 25 minutes of recording time, and then the sucker's dead. So you better have multiple batteries. This one, I can record multiple videos and don't have any problems. So definitely better in the battery department. One other area that this really shines that the ZV-1 doesn't is, watch this. Ta-da! You can take the camera lens off. So it comes with a kit lens, which is nice because it's 32 to 12, or 12 to 32 millimeter, which is nice because it's adjustable. So you put this on there, and then, ta-da! You can change it so you can get closer, farther away. So I also bought this fixed lens, this prime 25 millimeter lens. Works great. It's a 1.8, I believe. It's one of the Lumix lenses, and it's normally like 250 bucks. I got it on sale for 150. This is perfect for when you wanna do like the bokeh shot stuff, or if you want to use this for making like YouTube videos like I do, and then you can use this one and then set it up so you can get that nice buttery smooth bokeh effect. It works great. The autofocus on this is solid for stuff like that. 
One area that this one suffers where the ZV-1 excels is with the autofocus. So the autofocus, this one sometimes, especially when there's motion going on in the background, can do like a hunting autofocus thing where it'll kind of try to focus and then a couple seconds later, it'll try to focus again. It doesn't always do it. If you're in still settings like I am right now, you don't really have that problem at all. And I found that the autofocus is actually good in a majority of settings. But when you're out walking around, a lot of contrasting stuff, a lot of light changing behind you, it can have issues with that hunting autofocus. So just be cognizant or aware of that. You can hook up an external microphone. I use a shotgun microphone. The one I have is a Deity mic, the D3 Pro. Works great with this. You just plug it right in and then you just put the little cap thing back on there. But if you don't want to use that, it actually has pretty good built-in audio. We're going to test that here in a little bit because I took this camera out to the beach so I could test it out. And it's got the Nokia Ozo directional audio in it. So the microphone pickup can do behind, it can do in front, it can do automatic, it can do surround. It does really good with that. And then when it focuses in on something, especially like if you're in the frame and you have it focused on subject, then it kind of drowns out some of the other noise to make where you can hear the person or the object you know, better. It's enhanced over the other audio. Other features that I like, it has a dedicated record button, it has a dedicated shutter button, but then it also has an on-off switch. One of the things I hated about the Sony ZV-1 is it didn't have an on-off switch and you had to flip open the screen to get it to turn on. Well, you don't have to do that here and it also shuts off and goes into standby mode, which is nice so it won't kill your battery. When it comes to actually using the camera, digital viewfinder in here. So whenever you get your eye, your face close to it, you see it shut off the screen over there. It does that. This is actually brighter and better than the ZV-1 whenever it comes to the contrast and the brightness looking inside of here. Very, very good. Then the screen is touch screen and you can use it for autofocus. You can use it for some of the other features that are on here. And then you've got the menu with the articulating spin wheel over here so you can change the other features. Um, it does 4K at 30 frames per second. It does 1080p at 60 or 30 frames per second, or you can do 24 frames per second if you're feeling really froggy. You can also do, there's this mode on here called S and Q. It's called, stands for slow and quick. And you can set it up in that mode automatically. You can do slow-mo shots that way, or you can do stuff where it speeds it up up to eight times, depending on what your frame rate is. So it's really nice having that functionality there. When it comes to record times, you can only do maximum of 20 minutes. So 20 minutes, and if you do 4K, it knocks it down to 10 minutes. So those are things that you need to be aware of. It doesn't have any overheating issues. I haven't had any problems with that at all. It's lightweight, it's easy to use, very easy to get to the SD card to take it out. So you pop that open, SD card comes right out. This is, a, this is exceptionally nice whenever you have it on like a tripod or a mount. Here's why. If you have the Sony ZV-1, it's like right underneath the camera. So you have to take the camera on and off all the time to take the SD card out. Drove me absolutely crazy because when you mount this on something, you don't have to keep taking your camera off and putting it back on every time you gotta replace the battery, every time you gotta take, take the SD card out. So that works wonders. Very, very easy to pop the SD card in and out. I very much appreciate that. Buttons are straightforward, simple. You've got the knob to adjust all the modes. It is a 20 megapixel camera. I've got some samples. You'll see those here in a little bit, but when it comes to the, actually you not, know we'll show them right now. Here's some of the samples from the photos that I took. Depending on the light and the lens and things like that, um, yeah, it, it can make or break the pictures or the, the quality of the images that you're taking. And of course, the different types as well. I've got the prime lens, I've got the kit lens. So depending on what kind of shot you're going for, can be very much adjusted by the type of lens you have. And I really love that with this camera because you don't have to worry about being stuck with what it is for the rest of your life. It doesn't have optical image stabilization built into the camera. All the image stabilization is in the lens, which I mean, is fine. It's not as good as having the, you know, in the, in the camera itself, optical image stabilization, but it does have electronic image stabilization, which is okay. Uh, you'll see a video clip of that here in a minute. But the, the picture quality, I think the color accuracy is good. It does raw. If you get into all that crazy jazz and like to do a lot of your photo editing stuff, that's a little bit beyond my level of expertise. I don't do that stuff, but it's there and available if you want to do it. Like I said, I've been using this for a month. I've been shooting all my new videos with it. The audio pickup is good. It's good even when you're not using a microphone, but being able to connect the external one is solid. Over here on the right-hand side, 
you've got the HDMI, so you got a micro HDMI out, and then you've got a micro USB to charge it with, and also to connect the tripod hand grip, which is really nice. So you pop this sucker on here, connect it, and then you plug in the micro USB over here, and that's what allows you to control it. So it's super nice being able to just hold it, walk around, you can press the button to start recording. This makes vlogging and the vlogging lifestyle really great because otherwise you're like trying to hold the camera, you gotta put it on a special gimbal. This works great. I think that it's really nice that you can get this, especially if you get it part of the kit or you can buy it by itself for $100. The camera itself, very light, micro four thirds camera, so it's not big and bulky. It's got a small sensor in it. And it makes for, like I said, good quality video, but depending on the lens and the setting and the color profile and all that good stuff, you can take some good pictures with this. I mean, it's not the most amazing in the world, but it is decent enough, especially at the price. I think that this is a really good package for like the $700, $799 ballpark, and I've been seeing it on sale. Right now it's December 1st, so looking at holiday sales and stuff like that, I have seen it as low as like $650, $699, so you know, keep an eye out for that. I think that's it with regard to the actual camera itself. Let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the footage. So I went out to the beach, I did some driving around in the car, testing out the image stabilization and all, all that good stuff. So we're gonna look at those so you can get a good feel for what this camera is actually capable of in real life settings. I didn't put it in a nice, sterile, pristine environment. People want to take this out. It's a vlogging camera. I wanted to take it out and show you what some vlogging stuff looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at the footage. So I'm out and about with the Panasonic Lumix G100, and I wanted to go out and do a real world test. Right now I'm riding in the car with my wife. I figured what better way to test out the image stabilization than to go bouncing around in the car. One thing you need to know about the G100, optical image stabilization is only through the lens. So depending on what lens you have is gonna dictate how well that works. It does have electronic image stabilization, which you can set on standard or high or off. I have it on high right now, just so you can kind of get a feel for how good it works. Now, one thing that's really cool with this microphone that's built into the camera is it actually has Nokia's Ozo technology and it focuses in on whatever the subject is. So if I'm sitting here and it's focusing on my face or me as the object, then it will tune out other noise and it will you know, act, actively cancel some of that so that it focuses on what I'm saying. We'll have to test that out more later, but that's just a feature I wanted to tell you about here now. Originally when it came out, you couldn't use it as a webcam, but I use mine with the uh, HDMI converter. There's a link down in the description for the HDMI that I have. So it's very much like the Elgato Cam Link. And the one I use, I paid like a whopping 27 bucks for, and it does 1080p, no problem. And I've been using this for my live streams. This camera is utterly fantastic for live streaming. And if you wanna check out some of my live streams to see what the quality looks like, I think it's pretty fantastic because it does it without limit. And I've been able to get up to an hour and 20 minutes and it hasn't died on me. Of course, the light has been blinking, but to be able to do that with a camera that's as versatile as this and that has really solid quality, I think is good. Plus you can plug in an external microphone if you want to use it that way as well. This is a really good camera to use for YouTube stuff. It doesn't have that whole product mode where it has the auto depth sensing, where if you put a product in it, it will go ahead and zoom in on that and not your face. So this one's still very much limited to, you have to like cover up your face so that you can get the focus on the object. But anyway, this is all for the road test. I'm out on the highway now, so it's probably getting a little bit bouncier. And uh, yeah, we'll get to something else to talk more about the camera. One of the coolest things about the Z100, this the stock kit lens that it comes with, is definitely an improvement over the Z1. Because one, with this camera, you can change out the lenses. It's a micro four thirds camera. There are other Panasonic lenses that you can use, but this one goes from 12 to 32 millimeters. So you can actually zoom in and out while you're recording or for whatever you're doing. And that's really nice because it gives you a lot more versatility, especially when I'm recording in my setting and stuff. When I'm at home, it gives me the ability, I use a, a shotgun microphone on a boom stand, and then depending on where I want to set up my camera, I can focus it in on the setting that I want, or also you can see here out in the real world, it has a lot of application as well. So right now I'm out on the seawall in Galveston, so I figured what better place to test out how good this Ozo microphone is than to take it out here and see how well it works. So right now I have it on auto, but you can do directional sound with the microphone. 
you can have it where it picks up and focuses on the front, on the rear, you can have it on auto, you can have it on surround sound, so it picks up on everything. So right now, it's focusing on me, and since I'm the one talking, it's got the auto focus on my face. So I figured I'd bring it out here. There's like a nice breeze, of course, with I'm out by the water, and then, yeah, I just figured this would be a nice place to come test it out so y'all could see something outside of the house and get a feel for how the camera works. And I have the image stabilization turned on as well. This is the kit lens that comes with the camera. One of the superior things that I like about this camera is the fact that you can replace the lenses. It's the 25 millimeter lens, I got it. Uh, I got it on sale for like 150 bucks. Normally it's like $250, but if you saw some of the other photos, the other video that I took with it, it gives you that nice, buttery, smooth bokeh effect. So you get the portrait type shots because the regular lens doesn't do that. But this one has the zoom feature, which is nice too. So if you're gonna use this a lot, you really wanna make sure you have a full complement of lenses. And thankfully, it's compatible with the Micro Four Thirds lenses that Panasonic has. So I think that it's a real winner in that department. All right, so what do you think? Pretty decent footage, huh? This is a, I think, really good camera for people out there who wanna do the vlogging stuff and also wanna do YouTube. This is good for product reviews. It's good for setting up and shooting videos like I am now. Normally I would be using it, but I mean, I gotta record the video of the camera, so I can't really do that. I love having this screen. It works out great. It makes it so easy so you can see yourself. Just don't stare off at this while you're recording because then you're gonna look like this when you think that you're looking at the camera. So, you know, just a life pro tip there. Also, when you flip this forward, the rangefinder or the viewfinder, it doesn't work. You have to wait till it's flipped back around. I mean, you can only look at one or the other, I guess. So it does make sense, but yeah, I really like this. It's even got the Panasonic app you can connect. You can use the Panasonic app on iOS or Android so you can send the files to your phone or you can use that as a remote. You can see like a viewfinder, what you're seeing on the camera. You can use it as a shutter. You can use it to start recording video. So it's even more versatile that way. So this is one of those ones where you can take it out, set it up on the tripod, walk away, use your phone, connect to it, and you can control it that way. It's like being able to be your own one-man show, your own one-stop shop. You don't have to have another camera person. You don't have to have somebody else to use the controls. You don't need a special remote. It's nice that you can do all of that stuff very easily, handheld using this, set it up on a tripod using this, or if you set it up and then you wanna sit down and position yourself, switch over to the phone and then do it that way. So it's very versatile. I think that it's fantastic when it comes to video quality. You can even do slow-mo up to 120 frames per second. It looks really good. You saw some of the clips. And yeah, I think that Panasonic did a good job with this. I think that they set out with a target or with an idea in mind and a concept, and it turned out really good in the execution. It's not overly priced. It's not big and bulky. It has good battery life. It has the handheld uh, camera grip that goes along with it, which is a tripod. There's just so many levels that you can see where they thought and got people who actually do vlogging and said, hey, what do you wanna be able to do with this? You wanna be able to hold it and record? You wanna be able to set it up and record? You wanna be able to do slow-mo? You wanna be able to do 4K? You want good battery life? Those are all things It's like, I, I think you can go down the checkbox and what also makes it great is the ability to change out the lenses, which gives you even more flexibility. So uh, I am just tickled with this camera. I like it a lot. I am just a normal person who uses cameras. I, before I got this in my Sony a7 II, I just used the shutter button on my phone all the time. So this has been a learning process, but in the whole thing, using this camera, learning about how to use it, setting it up, using it for a living. I mean, I, I make videos all the time and I rely heavily on this. I think that it's solid. I think it handles light well. I think that it looks good. The color profiles are solid. You can even change that to adjust it if you want. There's just so much that you can do, but at the same time, it's so simple that you don't have to have a master's degree in photography to be able to use it. And I think that that's great because if you wanna get into the complexities of it, you know, color profile stuff and color grading once you get on the computer and raw, hey, go for it. But if you just want something nice, easy, simple to use, and you're just a normal Joe like me who needs a good camera to make videos with, but doesn't know about all the different levels of intricacy and fine tuning and just want something that works, this works great and I've had no problems with it and I love the battery life on it. So, so many good things here. And I just wanted to share this. This is my review of the Panasonic G100 and I think it's the bee's knees. So that's all I've got guys. Hopefully this has been helpful.
hopefully it's been informative and told you, you know, some stuff that you needed to know about it if you're interested in picking one up or using one. And hopefully it's been helpful. I mean, that's the end goal here. So that's all I got. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.